Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I have... Sometimes I get stuff stuck in my head, okay? And it might be from playing football and being the hot man on the kickoff team that, you know, maybe my brain is just screwed up. But I know over the years, um, a good friend and mentor of mine used to always call me FF. Forgive me for when I say, uh, when I cuss, but they called me the fuck-up fixer. When we'd have a job where the stuff was just a problem and nobody could figure out, it would say, call Mark, because he'll fix it. And... The Michael Irvin tape, a couple of things have kind of, they hit me last night and this morning that bother me. First of all, I did a video yesterday about it, and I said sexual assault. I had a person go through and say, oh, you're the only one calling it a sexual assault. You know, words matter, and basically it's, you know, in, in trying to turn it that I'm calling it something that it's not. I guarantee if you go ahead and Google Michael Irvin right now, you'll see, you know, accused of sexual assault, sexual harassment. You'll see it. In fact, let's even listen to Michael Irvin in his own words. Witnesses, I'm so thankful for this video, for this video, because without it, I, 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 I just don't know where this would, would have gone. Uh, you know, it, oh, uh, this is a sexual assault. This is what they're calling sexual assault. It just, mm. you can run the video. So when you come at me and say, you're the only one saying sexual assault. Well, now we're trying to change the narrative, much like Marriott is. Now they're trying to say it's sexual harassment when it first came out, that it was called sexual assault. And they made him sound out like he is a, uh, a werewolf. That's literally, you know, just about that, that, that we got to gotta get him out the hotel because he is literally, you know, a crazed werewolf that's going you know, gonna to put people in danger. But going through on this tape, there's a couple of things that just kind of hit me that, that just stick with me. And I want to go through the, the, the points, and I'll, I'll hit them as we go through. Okay? So, this okay, is the press Okay, as we start here, y'all can see up to the top right, um, Michael is outside with the gentleman that were here last time via Zoom. Um, I've called them the TMZ witnesses because they were the first to uh, interview them, but it's uh, th three gentlemen if you notice his body movements and what's going on, he's obviously going to be very friendly. There's some other people, actually, that I don't know their identity. Take a picture. That guy right there on the left, stop it. And go back 10 seconds. Can you do that? When I talked about the people that were in the back talking, I believe a complaining witness, I believe it's this gentleman here who's some kind of a manager. And then you'll see the witness who's been back come out this side, okay? She's going to walk way around here to this pole instead of back to where her job would be back that way. Okay, go ahead and roll. Okay, I want to stop right here for a second. Wait a minute. There he goes. Oops, excuse me. Stop there for a second. Here, here's what, what it hit me now. The, the woman will come, you know, to this. It's like a column, I'm assuming, that's supporting the ceiling and stuff, right? So that's an entranceway to get into the bar. And you will notice there is a guy. Let's watch. Her job would be back that way. Okay. okay. Go ahead and roll. Now what you'll notice is. Right there, Okay. So you see this guy who was in the bar who's walking out of this. This is a hallway, corridor, entranceway. It is a traffic spot. People get in, people get out. Okay, let's keep watching here. There he goes. She'll come this way pretty soon across the bottom. Also, when she walks in, you'll see she kind of looks around the pole to see if Michael is still coming. You see her just barely duck her head. Here she comes. Right there. You see how she stuck her head to the right? Now pause. She it. did. 
Now, she's way ahead of Michael. If she was to continue at her same speed for her job, she should be way over at the bar in a second, but she clearly slows down so that they're going to intersect at that kind of juncture where you have to walk in the bar. So go ahead. Okay. So back to what I just said. Right now, Michael Irvin and her are standing in the middle of the entranceway. Shakes her hand. Right? They start having a conversation. This is the shake I talked to you about in the beginning, the opening shake. Pause it. Okay, so we have, I guess that's the security guy who's going in, in the walkway. Irving is in the middle of the walkway. This guy over here with his hands on his hips is the angry manager, okay? If you go back a, a few seconds, I want him to see what he does with a hand clap when he sees her with Michael. He comes behind the bar, you'll see him walk out. So focus on him this time instead of on her. We went back a little far. It well, it'll get here in a second. So okay. I want you to, th this is this is important because they say she stepped back because of something that Michael Irvin does. said. But I'm going to say, her back there where wa back watch here. this. He comes up, the, the manager, and you'll see him when he sees her. Watch his expression when he does. See the claps? I don't know what that is. So right now, up. okay, so right now, they are actually blocking and impeding traffic in the entranceway. The two of them are literally right there, okay, right? Up here, and you can see he's, he's visibly frustrated. Okay, now, sitting over, the guy standing up over there, that's the guys that just came in with Michael Irvin, okay? Michael Irvin came in from taking a picture. They've had, you know, a conversation where he's allowed you to go outside, right? What's okay, so like now, you've got the guy who's walking into the space, and you, Michael no, Irvin, okay, so Michael Irvin is like, oh, well, you know, people are trying to get in here. You know, let's move out of the entrance way. That's why he moved towards her. You don't stand in the middle of the way and block traffic. You get the hell up out the way. Move it. Get out the way. Get out the way. So that's where they step back. And, and you see where he steps over towards the side of the entrance way. I'm getting out of the space. And she realizes, yeah, I work here. It doesn't look good if I am, like, blocking the space. We have friendly interaction. Body okay, so now they're not blocking the space anymore. They're having conversations. Just talk. In fact, as you see, he keeps more space from him than he does when he's talking to any male at any point in the bar. Okay, now, here's the other part that bothered me, Okay. The thing that you see, you see the security guy and the other guy. So we get told there's two employees that are watching him. Yeah, they're watching him. Because I've done there, been there. I have done this. When you see someone famous, you're taken back. Oh, my God, there's you know Michael Irvin. Because I've done this. I've done this to Michael Irvin. I remember being at the NFL commissioner's party in Detroit. I think it was 2007, maybe. And that was the passing of the torch from Paul Tagliabue to, to uh, Roger Goodell. And it was like uh, the anniversary of the uh, uh, MVPs. So literally every MVP that was still alive from the Super Bowls was there. And the way they were doing the commissioner's parties at those time were there were Tickets outside of the ropes, which there were like 4,000 of those. And then there's tickets that were inside of the ropes. Inside of the ropes, each of the teams had a table. Each of the teams had a table. Okay? So you've got the owners and their VIPs. Because I remember Emmett Smith being there, and I'm walking around the table several times because it's like, I want to get. And, and what you're doing is. You don't want to go up to somebody and say, hey, I'm a big fan. I would like to get a picture with you um, and interrupt because everybody is talking to these famous people. So you're trying to bide your time and make it seem, in, you know, like an ax. Oh, hey, you know, they got a break. They're not sitting there stuffing their face with food. You don't want to go up and say, hey, can I get a picture? And it's like, why are you messing with me? Because you're going to go ahead and get them off of, you know, it's like, dude, I'm eating. You know, leave me alone. Because sometimes people don't want to be bothered. So you wait for the right time. And so you have this Marriott employee who is circling around. You know, he's, got, he's engaged in a conversation right now. 
I'll wait till he's done. I'll ask him for my picture because then I can show it to people. Hey, man, I met Michael Irvin. And then, of course, everybody's going to be sharing it. You know, you're the, you're the big guy. You get your five minutes of pain. Now, as far as the security guy goes, that's a different story. Because one of the ways I got this channel going was, you know, when I would be out with Joe Boo and taking pictures, people would come up and say, and I would say, hey, can I take your picture with it? And, you know, people would come up to me and say, hey, you're Mark Holmes and stuff like that. I said, yeah, let me take a picture of you to share. And it's like, no, I'm on duty. I can't do that. And usually police and security people can never be photographed at work. Just can't. So now Michael Irvin gets out of the entranceway. Okay, let's keep on. Some of y'all probably wish you keep more space when he talked to you. <laughs> and see, you try and be That's inconspicuous. In He's upset over there on the left. With whatever's happening. The guy in the gray up top, that's the security guard that's wandering around. He'll, he'll circle around many times around Michael and her. You're circling around because you're buying your time to meet him. You don't want to go through and say, step in front of her. And you know, you, you're know you biding your time. Cause see, and we've been going for a while. They're having a lot of conversation. As, as Marriott released in their statement, they said basically... He said one word to her, an offensive, vulgar thing that he did not say, and it's clear from the video. And from okay, so let me go back to this. So here's what Marriott had said. Irving reached out and touched her arm during the conversation without her consent, causing her to step back. Is it possible, okay, is it possible that he said, oh, hey, let's get out of the way. Hey, let's get out of the way. Let's get out of the way. And she says, oh, yeah, duh, we're in the walkway. Yeah. And, and it's, we'll keep on, we'll keep on going. Okay. From these witnesses, but they have a very lengthy conversation and no one's trying to tell us what that is. Go ahead. Okay, so that time, see, that time when he touched her, she didn't step back. She did a little curtsy, right? Let's go back. The first time he touched her, they were in the middle of the walkway. Right? He touched her in the arm. She turned her head. Hmm. That's where she tells some kind of joke. Okay. I believe to him. You see right? Him bend over. She's shaking her head back and forth like that. He walked in closer to her. She didn't back up at all. Now they're shaking hands. Now I want you to watch the end interaction here. Because she's going to kind of, when the people come up, she'll kick her leg. Okay. So, and now, now, now back to this. Back to my other part here. So now... The guy in the black has realized, okay, they're wrapping up. Let me make a beeline in there because you don't, because here's what, here's what happens. You don't want to go ahead and, and, and slow your roll because somebody else will jump in. I've been in that situation where, you know, you're waiting and waiting and waiting and you're trying, you're trying to be polite and you don't want to stay. And then somebody else just does the beeline in front of you. And then the next thing you know, they're like, well, that's enough guys. I got to go. And you've missed your opportunity. He is making the line in right now to get his picture. Now, see, go back to where I said, I did this with Michael Irvin at this commissioner's party that was in Detroit. One of the greatest events that I have ever been to was literally an hour after Michael Irvin found out he was not going to be a first ballot hall of fame. Michael Irvin was standing over by the food and I'm going to tell you the food at the commissioner's party. Shh, oh my God. Shrimp. I uh, literally shrimp. Shrimp this big, this big, literally this big, okay? Michael Irvin was standing there by himself. Nobody was going up to Michael Irvin. I walk by to go get a plate, and I see there's Michael Irvin. There's Michael Irvin. I go back to Tracy. I'm like, Tracy, it's Michael Irvin over there. It's Michael Irvin. I said, but he just found out he's not going to be in the Hall of Fame this year. 
And so I circled around again. Still nobody's there talking to him. And I'm trying to work up my nerve and figure out what to say to Michael Irvin because he just found out one of the most disappointing things in his life at this point, I'm sure. He is not going in as a first ballot Hall of Famer. Me, I'm Joe the fan that is just like, this guy is one of my football gods here. One of the greatest NFL players I watched. He is right here. I may never in my life have the opportunity to meet him, but I'm scared to go over to him because of the situation. So I went, I know I went past him three or four times before I finally stopped circling him and went up and said, How you doing, Mike? Mark Holmes, huge okay. fan. Sorry about you not getting in and everything else and so on. And we actually talked for like two minutes or so. And it was actually one of the most incredible conversations because nobody was going over there to talk to him. And I think actually at that time, maybe he needed to talk to somebody. And it was good to have a fan say, you're one of the greatest players of all time, buddy. You know, you're the greatest and everything else. And maybe it made him feel better. I don't know. And it's funny because years later, I've got the picture with me and him there, and I got him to autograph it at an autograph signing show. He's like, did I really wear that? Yeah, it's like, yeah, you were wearing that. You were wearing, yes, yes, Michael, you were wearing that. And so that's where this guy, he's not worried about the safety of the employee. He's worried about getting his selfie. Watch. And she walks off. She's still talking to Michael. She's still talking to Tate. So, so he's like, okay, you know, he's uh, he's there. Look, look, he's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. Okay, and look, as soon as she's gone, bam. Okay. Okay. As soon as she's gone, I'm making my beeline to get my opportunity. Back in the bar, she's way gone. Because you're about to watch. She's going to go over here, and that guy is going to go very. He's going to get very visibly upset with her. And basically, there's somebody who's. I don't want to use the word abusive, but there's somebody who's really being forward to her it's this gentleman here it wasn't michael so watch what happens okay go ahead and roll the tape he's going up hey mr Irvin. uh and she can grab her and she follows he's talking ball. okay okay now michael's looking over there for the first time he's not watching her he's talking to these guys you'll see in a second they turn around and they start talking to him the guy in the white hat okay go ahead see uh, he's still look he's got he's got his hands he's got his hands in his pocket he, he he's trying to get himself together and walks okay out. And so, and so here's the thing, because we were told that his speech was slurred. His speech was slurred and this, that, and the other. So how did they understand everything they were saying? The guy probably said, hey, Mr. Irvin, can I get a picture with you? And he's been drinking, probably tired, and it's like, okay, let me, let, you guys have seen me. I've yawned and uh, let me wait, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. And I will bet you, I will bet you. And see, here's the thing. So the security guy, he's hanging around. He knows I can't get a picture in there because I'm a security guy. If I get on there, I'm getting fired. I bet you that the employee who was there asking for a selfie and it's caught on camera, had this not been them being able to use this as evidence would be reprimanded or lose his job for having that picture. Because as I've learned from my wife, because I was blessed, my wife worked the United ways, you know, between the NFL um, and community development and everything else. And we were able to go on all of these events where I was a volunteer and got to meet all these people. And I was always told by her, because I remember going to Valley Ranch, literally during spring training, the year that the building collapsed, we did a photo shoot with DeMarcus, Lawrence, DeMarcus Ware. And the locker room was only about 30 feet from me. And I'm watching Jason Witten and Jason Garrett, Roy Williams, players walking back and forth. And she says, remember, this is my job. You can't be Joe the fan because this is not a situation where they're there to go ahead and appease the fans. They're there doing business. And so you cannot be Joe the fan when your job is to deal with them. If they have all the Marriott employees that are coming there to talk and get, so, no, that's not, no, that, that's not what they're there for. They want the people to feel safe and comfortable in this, that, and the other. So I'm betting, I'm betting, and I may be wrong, 
But this Marriott employee here, here we believe Renaissance employee, who is getting a selfie right here, and the security has a vested right interest there. in towing the company to line. Because you're caught on the surveillance cameras asking an NFL player for a selfie. You don't do that. Shows you don't do that. that. So I'm sure after all this hit, it's like, oh, wait a minute. We got, we got Joe taking a uh, Joe, we'd like you to come into the office here and talk to you. If that employee was concerned about how Michael Irving was sexually assaulting this employee, then why is he asking him for a selfie? Why is he asking Michael Irvin for a picture and you're concerned about your coworker being assaulted? You know why? Because he wasn't concerned about her being assaulted. Sorry. Just not. Just not. And I can guarantee you that his livelihood pressure was on him. I'm sure I will get some blowback. People will say, well, you're just a Michael Irvin fan and a Cowboy fan and you're full of crap. Well, you know, everybody's going to see this the way they want to see it. And I've had people that have emailed me and say he's a sexual predator. If that's sexual being sexual predator, I'm sorry, then then the whole world's in, then every every woman out there has been sexually assaulted then. I'm telling you, she stepped back because they were in the entranceway there blocking traffic. When he touched her on the arm, she turned that head kind of, <laughs> okay, right? I'm telling you, you can see it the way you want to see it. This is how I saw it and the things that bothered me that came out. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And um, make sure you hit the like button.